G'day and welcome to MW Laser. In this video we're going to have a look at the vendor settings in RD Works and how to configure your reader controller. Now this may be because you've inadvertently uh, wiped all the settings from your controller and you don't have a backup to restore from or you may have upgraded your controller to a new one and you need to configure that new one for your machine. Now whether you've used your machine or not or it's a new controller it's always a good idea to have a backup of your vendor settings so that you can backup and restore if you need to. And right now let's have a look at backing up your vendor settings. So after you've connected to your controller, whether it's by USB or network connection, go to File, Vendor Settings and enter the password RD8888. Now the information from the screen may not actually be the settings from the controller, so the first button that we press is Read. This reads the information from the controller and fills in the fields for our values here. Now what we can do to back these up is hit the save button and then save them somewhere safe, either on a USB or on a hard drive. And in this case, I've called them vendor settings backup. We get the message save parameter success. And now what we can do is make changes. And if we ever want to go back to those backup files, we can always open those files, load them back into the system here. It says import parameter success. Now those settings are not saved to the controller yet until we hit write. After we've hit write, it will write all that information back to the controller and we've now restored our settings. Now at the beginning of this video, there is some fan noise, which I apologize for, but I do need the machine on in order to connect to the controller. But once I'm able to, I will turn that off. So here in RDWorks, down on the right hand side of the machine, if you can't see where all the device settings are down the bottom, you can click and drag here and drag it up and then you can make sure that you're connected to the correct device. In this case, I'm connected via an IP address of the machine on my network. To configure the homing position, go to Config, System Setting, and you can note the homing position of your machine and then tick the box that is applicable to your machine. For the machine that I'm using, it is at the top left hand or the back left hand corner. We can also enter the page width and the page height for our axis here. And now we'll have a look at configuring the vendor settings. To do that, go into File, Vendor Settings, and enter the password RD8888. Press Enter. Now let's have a look at some of the settings here in Vendor Tools. The first thing that we need to do when we open up this is read the information from the controller. The settings that are displayed here may not actually be the settings in the controller, so what we need to do is get that information first by clicking on the Read button. If your machine is successfully connected, it would read the information from the controller and enter all the values from the controller in the fields. Now that the information is read, let's have a look at some of these fields and how they'll affect the functioning of your laser machine. So first of all, you notice that we're on the motor section and we have the axis here for X, Y, Z and U. So let's have a look at X and Y axis. The first option here, let's explain the direction polarity. So the direction polarity changes the direction of the stepper motor for the axis. So for example, on this machine, the axis is on the top left hand corner. If I have the direction polarity set positive and I power on the machine and the laser head moves towards the right, then I have the polarity incorrect. So that's where you would change this from positive to negative. With the limiter polarity, the most common option is negative. We have two options here, positive or negative, and this is whether the signal is a high or low signal that the uh, system is looking for. And um, on this example that I'm gonna show you here, I've incorrectly set the y-axis limiter polarity to show you what would happen if you had that uh, option incorrectly selected. So I have the x-axis set to negative and the y-axis set to positive and I will do a reset on the controller and have a watch of the laser head as it moves and you'll notice that the y-axis won't move but the x-axis will head towards the limit switch. In this example the y-axis won't reset and the system will just keep trying to reset the y-axis. So now I've moved the laser head again and I'm gonna change the limiter polarity for the Y axis back to negative and write that to the controller. And now if we reset again, everything should reset back to the top left hand side of the machine.
Next we have the breadth of the axis. So what we can do is enter the breadth of our axis here. And in this machine that I'm configuring, it's 1300 by 900. So on the X axis, I enter the breadth of 1300. And on the Y axis, I can enter 900. So with the home offset, this is a distance that you want the laser head to move away from the zero zero position after a reset. Uh, you may only want a couple of millimeters, but I want to show you here in this example uh, exactly what happens. So if I put in here a, a home offset of 50 millimeters, which is a bit excessive, but just for this example, so you can see the laser head move, I'm going to put a 50 millimeter offset on both the X and the Y axis and write that to the controller. Now what I'm going to do is press the reset button on the controller, have a watch as it moves to the zero zero position and then moves away 50 millimeters on the X and the Y axis. So if your zero zero reset position is at the extremities of your laser work area, you can do a home offset so that it would come back into the work area at a position where you want to start from. So this option here, the enable limit trigger is if you have a hard limit switch on your axes uh, at both ends or even at one end where you want it to um, stop the machine from going anywhere past that. Now there is a limit switch already on the homing position so that would reset to zero zero and in that case we would have this one here enabled as home and that would reset that axis and the same for the X axis we have it on and if you have a separate limit switch at the far end of travel you can enable that option here. The PWM rising edge valid option, that is the pulse width modulation. So that is got to do with the uh, stepper motors receiving a signal and whether it's receiving the signal to move on the rising or the falling edge of that signal. And I'll show you a diagram here where you can see the rising edge is the rising edge of that signal. That's when the motor would move. Otherwise it would wait until the end where it's the falling edge of that signal. So you may have some delay in where the laser is actually firing and when the motor is moving. So this option needs to be set correctly for your machine. So here on the X axis, we've also got the step length and on the Y axis. So you can start with some default values of five or 10 and write that to the controller and then cut out a 100 millimeter square. Measure the axes as it actually cuts. So cut out that square and measure each side. And for example, if it's not 100 millimeters, you can come in here to the X axis. And if it measured at 103 millimeters, you enter the measuring length of 103 and say, okay and that would update our step length value for our X axis. Then you repeat that for the Y axis, measure that uh, distance that it cut and come back in here and calibrate it using that actual measured length as it cut out. If you need further reference, you can refer to a previous video that I've done on calibrating your X and Y axis. Now the jump off speed here is set at 15 millimeters a second and this is the speed at which the motion of the axis will start from a stationary position. Now if it's too high what will happen is the motor can lose steps, it could even squeal or stall. So we don't want to have it too high and if it's too low then it will reduce the running speed of the whole project that you're cutting out. This next one down here is the maximum speed in millimeters per second and that's the maximum speed that you want to limit that axis to. So we're currently looking at the X axis and if we limit it to whatever speed we want. So for example, your axis may uh, stall and stutter or start to vibrate over a certain speed. You can then limit your speed there to whatever. So in this case, I've set it to 800 millimeters a second. So next we have the maximum acceleration and on the X axis, we have this set here at 20,000. Now typical ranges for the X axis are between 8,000 and 20,000. And that's because they've got a smaller inertia than a Y axis. Now with the Y axis, because it's got that larger inertia, the typical range for this is between 800 and 3,000. The e-stop acceleration is if the hard limit protection is enabled, then when the um, machine reaches that limit, it will decelerate. Now this can be a two to three times the value of our maximum acceleration. So in this example, I have max acceleration at 2000 for my Y axis and the e-stop acceleration at 4000. And on our X axis, we have a maximum acceleration of 20,000 and therefore I've put the e-stop acceleration at 40,000. 
And the keying jump off speed is similar to the jump off speed for the motion of the axis. So we can set that the same. And we also have the acceleration for that. So we can set that at 1000, 2000, whatever we want the acceleration when we press the button to control uh, the movement of the laser head. Now, if we do press the button on the laser head, for example, we press the up button, but it moves down and the left button and it moves right, then for the corresponding axis, we can invert the direction. So in this case, I've pressed the right button on my controller and the laser head is moving left. So I've had to invert that direction. However, on my Y axis, when I press up, it moves up. So this one does not need to be ticked. So the next option down on the left hand side is the laser where we can configure whether we have one or multiple tubes. If we have multiple tubes, we can enable that and then tick the second laser tube option and enter values for it. We're just going to be setting up one laser tube and you have the options of glass tube, RF laser, or that's either pre-ignition or no pre-ignition. In this case, we're going to be selecting a glass laser tube and we enter our minimum and our maximum power that we want for that tube. Now the laser frequency is a pulse frequency of the control signal used by the laser. In general, for a laser glass tube, this is about 20 kilohertz. If you're using an RF tube, then you might want to set this to approximately five kilohertz. And you might want to check with the manufacturer of your tube when you're setting these values. Now we're also using a low level signal, so that would be set to low. And to determine whether you have a low level or high level signal, I'll pop a diagram up on the screen here. And you can see here that we have two options at the bottom of this power supply, TL or TH, sometimes labeled TTL or TTH, and that is the low or the high signal. So if your wires are connected to the low signal, then that's where the signal level would be set here. And we want to enable water protect. Now just a quick note about the water protect. Now we tick this box if you have the water sensor wired directly into your laser controller. If your laser power supply is controlling the water protect, then this option may need to be unticked. And I'll show you a wiring diagram here. Now we have a water flow sensor and that water flow sensor you can see is wired to the laser main board and that is connected to the WP input. Now some lasers don't actually have this connected to the main board itself. However, you see down lower on the laser power supply, it has a water protect feature or function. Now, if you only have the sensor wired into the water protect on the laser power supply, then that is controlling your water protection for your laser tube and not the controller. So this is one way where you need to have a look and see how your system is wired up and whether you need to enable or disable the water protect feature here in the RD Works vendor tools. The next option down we have other and this is the transmission mode of the uh, the motors so we have belt and stepper motor options here so we have belt and servo motor a screw motor if you've got a screw drive motor or a screw and servo motor in this case i'm using the uh, belt and step motor and we have a feed direction either single or bi-directional and down the bottom here we have the enable parameters and this is if you want to enable the door protect switch or a foot switch that uh, stops the machine from operating if that switch is deactivated and underneath that we have enable blower and this is for our air assist and once you're happy with all your settings then you need to make sure you write them back to the controller before you do any further testing or operate your machine so you press write and the information will be written back to your controller and then you can click on exit so I hope you found this video useful in setting up your controller, uh, whether it's a, a replacement controller or a new controller. It's always a good idea to have a backup of those vendor settings, so that initial backup. And then once you've configured the controller, back those settings up again as another file in case you need to access them in the future. If you need more information, refer to the user manual for your controller and these for the Rewida are available at rd-acs.com. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And until next time, take care. Cheers.